Hello, I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we are rocketing to the end of our third week of class, finishing up module two and heading into a holiday weekend that I hope gets everybody some much needed rest and relaxation after the madness of the semester start. So um, this week uh, in module two, you have been reading and working on annotating and summarizing uh, active reading and sentence structure. So I'll talk to you about all of these things for a few minutes in this video. Um, so first off, your um, module talks a bit about active reading. Now when we talk about active reading, we are reading to engage with the content, to really understand it, to think about it, maybe eventually analyze it. Um, and there are a variety of ways you can do that. Um, I know that we have all probably had the experience of reading something and getting to the end of a page or maybe even two or three pages and realizing, I don't remember what I just read. It happens to me when I'm tired, when I'm distracted, or when I'm reading something that's really complex and I'm trying to force myself to get through it. So some things that have been really helpful uh, over the years in addressing this problem. Um, first of all, breaking your reading into smaller portions. Sometimes we try to uh, cram all of our study time into one big session because we have that day off or away from our kids or whatever. Um, but that can be counterproductive uh, when you try to push through uh, and you can't, um, you know, take the time to process the reading and take the time to understand it. And some folks will say, well, if I do that, then I'm going to forget what I read before I come back. This is where it can be really helpful to take some notes as you read and maybe even do a quick little bullet point outline uh, of the paragraphs that you read or the sections you read to jot down the important main ideas. Um, you can also, if something is really giving you trouble, try paraphrasing it. When we paraphrase, we're taking the writer's ideas and we're putting them in our own words and our own sentence structure. And you have to really understand something well to paraphrase it. You'll see that when we uh, move into working on the research paper in English 111. Um, so you will um, have to really force your mind to think hard about what that writer is saying. Um, students often ask, well, what kind of notes should I take? Uh, well, it depends on the kind of reading you're doing uh, and what kind of information you need from it. What is it that you're planning to do? Uh, when I was in graduate school, I would often take notes that would later help me write papers. Um, when I was taking history courses in undergrad, I would make a little timeline of when important events happened in the content that I had to read for class. Um, if I was working on some science uh, readings, I would define words I didn't understand. If I was reading something, some super complex novel, a lot of characters, I had to read one in graduate school that had something like 35 or 40 characters. I kept a log of new characters so that when somebody was introduced, I could look back and go, ah, I don't know this character. Let me jot their name down. Or I'd hear the name and go find them and remember where they were introduced and how they fit into the story. Um, you don't have to read any 800 page novels for this class. So you probably won't have to do that. Um, so write down questions that come up as you read. Write down reflections you have as you read. Um, so your reactions are really important uh, and can help you. Um, and part of being able to read actively really involves having the time to do it. Um, I know time management is a struggle for many of us. Um, you can see one thing I never managed to do is have the time to clean my office. Um, but we have to uh, block time for school. I always tell students treat school like your job. Um, block time to work on it um, and make that, you know, a non-negotiable appointment. Another strategy that's helpful is that even if you don't have work due, go ahead and do something in the class and be working. Um, I know I don't have things open very far out in our class, but I am working on that. Um, so those of you who have um, you know, completed everything in the module, go on to the next one and see what there is that you can do there. Um, or go into 111 and spend the time working there. Um, so the article, I'm sorry, the module also talked about writing conventions. Uh, and as you know from our discussions in English 111, standard English uh, does matter. Um, standard English, you know, it's expected that we use that when we write 
none of us talk like that, right? Um, you all read Mother Tongue where Amy Tan talked about the way people really communicate and how unfortunate it is that people can be judged for the way they communicate, especially people who um, are um, multilingual and English is not their uh first language. Uh, in those cases, you know, people often have to deal with a lot of mistreatment. And whether we like it or not, people judge us based on the way we communicate. Now, the way we communicate is very personal to us. It is a reflection of where we're from, who our family is, our life experiences, and I'm not out to change that, okay? The way you communicate is wonderful and it is fine. However, when you're writing for college classes, when you are creating a resume for um, a job, when you are engaging in work correspondence, we have to use those standards. Um, so this week talks a bit about sentence structure. Um, Keep in mind that sentences have to have a subject and a verb, and they have to deliver a complete thought. Whether a sentence is a fragment, uh, correct, or a run-on is not a function of how long it is. It's a function of are the parts there, are they arranged correctly, and is it clear, okay? Um, fragments and run-ons are the two most common issues that I see in English 111. And they are often a result of someone drafting and trying to get all of their ideas down and just not thoroughly revising and fixing those issues. It's totally fine to write a fragment. It's totally fine to write a run-on sentence when you're drafting, but you have to go back and correct everything, make it clear uh, and make it work and make it fit. Um, so your mind tap this week um, and your, uh, in English 111, your inquisitive last week dealt a good deal with sentence structure. Um, so whatever questions you all have about that, please definitely let me know. Uh, and remember in 111 to do your little seagull readings. Uh, I, get, I give you some content to help with grammar and sentence structure and things like that throughout. Um, and if you read them before you do the, um, the, my brain, <laughs> the Cengage work in MindTap and the Inquisitive, um, it will most likely be helpful. So um, that's where we are there. Uh, I'm working to get everything graded in both classes as quickly as I can. Y'all know I'm a little bit behind, um, but I'll be coming back in a video for 111 shortly, and I'll be providing you a um, video on MLA formatting to help with that a little bit and troubleshoot that. I hope y'all are having a great week. Please get in touch if I can help you. Take care.